This is Hello Glass with another glass blowing uh, interview. What is your name and are you a glass blower? My name is Jenny Newson and yes I am a glass blower. How long have you been blowing glass and you consider yourself a master? <laughs> master, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I've been doing this uh, 20 years, I guess. I started making beads, uh, soft glass beads in the torch in 1991. And um, now I'm uh, starting to mess with the boro just a little bit. But um, still, there's still a lot for me to do in soft glass. Your favorite style or type of glass to create with? I really like the 104. I'm used to the way that it flows. I like its hang time. I like the sculptability of it, uh, the way that it's still fluid af after it's taken out of the flame. And Boro's never been able to give me that. And that's one thing that I really enjoy about working the glasses is that, that, that fluidity, the, the workability of it. Um, so 104 is still my favorite. But now I like the 104 silver glasses. <laughs> what state do you call home for your glass shop? Uh, Oregon. Do you uh, own or work under a glass brand or art name? Um, I'm Firebrand Beads, but mostly people know me as that tag glass because I'm the one who answers the phone whenever you call Troutman Art Glass and put in your order for Boro or the uh, Silver 104. <laughs> Do you make your living solely off glass blowing? Um, not per se. I make my living off of working for Paul. So I run Paul's office. So you, it keeps me hands in the business without actually being on the torch so much. So. Yeah. If you could blow glass with anyone living, who would that be? Ooh, with anyone living. Wow. That's a really good question. Um, I like jamming with um, people like Jim Smersich. He's uh, an old, old, old school soft glass guy uh, in the beads. Um, I would like to uh, do Boro uh, hand in hand with uh, some of my favorite Boro guys at some point, but uh, there's too many to name. <laughs> what style or technique of glass is hardest for you? Right now it is the, the crossover between soft glass and Boro. The Boro doesn't have the hang time. There's, there's certain techniques that I think a lot of Boro workers take for granted that don't always translate. Uh, working air out of your rods and things like that, things that you do all the time uh, and don't even think about it, you know, knowing how to do seals and, and joints. Uh, I don't need to do that in soft glass. So, you know, but they always look at mine and go, gee, you can just pile on layers of clear and you don't see all the joints. So there, there's, different, there's different things about them, but I, I, I find that the crossover is starting to make me a little crazy. <laughs> Name two people that taught or influenced your glass skills. Michael Max, for one, and he was one of the Seattle Seven, the original Seven bead makers in America, and he was one of my first teachers. Uh, in fact, this uh, Maltese star that I wear here is based on reorienting the hole and the design um, to the hole from an original Michael Max bead from the 1980s. And uh, so uh, he was one of my first teachers, and I will always give uh, credit where that credit's due. Uh, Jim Smersich, I think, is the best um, background basic stuff guy you can ever get in the 104 beads. Um, you know, he talks about your heat levels and knowing all these things that, you know, even after 10 years of the torch, he taught me some basic things that made all my other work better. So I always give my props to Jimmy whenever I can. Is there any style or technique of glass that you would or will learn in the future? I want to do more offhand blowing furnace glass. That's always been what drew me into the glass in the first place. And I think that's where I will eventually get to go. Name two glass artists that impress you. Two that impress me. Uh, wow, uh, there's so many. Uh, John Kabuki is one, um, and uh, not only for his incredible skill and talent, but for being a genuine nice guy too. Um, and um, gosh, Sue Ellen Fowler, one of the very original floral people. What styles or techniques in glass amazed you when you first saw it? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Watch that chip belt, man. Great answer. <laughs> Worst injury you ever got making glass art? Um, hmm. Could be the crater when I dropped a bead on my hand. Uh, could be the scars from working in the factory handling rod, ripping up my arms, but nothing so bad so far. What do you wish to accomplish in the glass industry? I like sh spreading the tag love right now. It's all about uh, you know getting more of the uh, best boro glass and the best boro hands. <laughs> right. How does a glass fan get a hold of your work? My work. Wow. Facebook. 
Yeah, um, you know, I don't, I feel like all I do anymore is stupid little test feeds and memorial cremains projects for friends and, and family. Uh, I don't really get a lot of time uh, to do a lot of my own work anymore. It's, um, it's, it's rare to find my work anymore. Uh, there's a few galleries at the Oregon coast that still have some of my stuff, uh, the Earthworks galleries. But most of the time anymore I'm making test speeds and I'm making sure the color works and moving on or, or doing something really, really, really personal. You've got three minutes to tell the world whatever you want. Go for it. <laughs> Um, you know, when I first started making beads in 1991, the bright, beautiful colors of the Murano glass were where it was at for me, and that really drew me in. And the first time I saw some of the North Star Caramel uh, was one of uh, Bob Snodgrass's early students. And I'm standing there with a handful of these ugly, wonky beads that are all these bright, cheerful colors. And this guy's standing there with his ugly, wadded club. He was so proud. It was his first one ever of this glass that had changeability in it. And I, he looked at mine and he said, I want those colors. And I looked at his and I said, I want those colors. And now we have them. And I get to preach that to the world working for Troutman. And I love that um, Paul has been able to really do that. He's been able to give you the Lucy Bee colors in the Boro, and he's been able to give us the changeable glasses in the 104. And uh, I think it, 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 it means that, that what I wanted 20 years ago has finally come to fruition, and I get to be a part of it, and I get to help plug people together with the materials that they need, the price points they need, the, uh, the distribution network, and, uh, and it, it feels really good, and uh, I'm enjoying that a lot. What's the phone number to get a hold of you? Ah, the tag office is 503-656-9350. This was Hello Glass with another <laughs> Real Glass Artist interview. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Tony.